Welcome to the Graybeard Chronicles podcast. Your hosts, Brian Halstead and Kevin Harkins, are two gray-bearded patriots who love God, their family and friends, and their country. The Graybeards are here to inspire, inform, and educate you on a myriad of topics they are passionate about. Brian and Kevin have a strong desire to share this with you to help you live your best life. Sit back and enjoy this amazing podcast as the Greybeards pass along the wisdom of the ages. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Greybeard Chronicles. I'm Brian Halstead. And I'm Kevin Harkins. And Kevin, we're here to pass along some wisdom of the ages. What the heck does that mean? We're not perfect, but we do have gray beards. And that means we've got some significant life experience some life lessons, and some perspectives that are worthy of passing along. Well, I think that sums it up nicely. Let's get to it. Kevin, what's going on, sir? Hi, Bryant. How are you doing? I am well, thanks. How are you? Your beard looking good, at least from this perspective. I'm sure it'll be looking equally as good if I were sitting right next to you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. It's yeah, been, it looks, it's been looks very, uh, I don't know, just, just look, looking good. You know the secret? No. I haven't let anybody cut it in a long time. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Every okay. now and then I have to go back, but it's been, it's been, uh, I don't know, eight, 10 months since uh, it had any, any grooming by anyone except me. Do you, do you groom it? I mean, with a razor, what do you have? I mean, uh, you know, a clipper or whatever, scissors. I don't know. How do you groom that thing? So the, the beard itself, I, I usually just uh, don't mess with it. Right. Uh, my yeah. mustache, I have to cut that thing cause it gets all in my mouth and yeah. irritates yeah. the crap out of me. But, um, yeah, the beard, I just kind of let it go. All in right. The, in the infamous words of George Bruno, the solution, what, what does he say? Um, time and length is the solution to any beard problem. Just let it, okay. grow. let it grow. Let it grow. All right. Yep. Well, in, in addition to my awesome beard, I'm, I'm a fancy boy today. Look at this. Woof. Looking good. <laughs> Self-proclaimed fancy boy today. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know that I would ever tag myself as that. Oh, well, I mean, I mean it in the best possible way. Okay. All right. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> fancy boy. <laughs> yes, you are very, you're, you're looking very dapper today. Oh, boy. Thank you. So what what's going on, man? What's uh, what's new in yeah, you, your world? You, it's weird because you you're. One. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm weird because we're we're you know like located in different places right now. I'm not you know you're not over here in the in the chair where you normally are. Right. I was thinking about your topic when you sent it to me. Right. And it's like it's like saying when I got it, it's like saying today's topic is the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. That's big. That's a so, big one. <laughs> right? Well, I mean, we can talk about the ocean if you want to. But it's not, uh, I, I think it's one of those topics that it is, it is, well, it can, it can be big. You can take it a bunch of different directions, but I, I think there's kind of a commonly recognized focus of that particular term. Okay. I, I, I probably will agree with you once I know what that is. I don't know what it is, but... I, what I really want to know, for starters, is what what's the impetus behind it? What what caused you to focus on on this particular topic? So you you know we put these suggestions out there. In fact, I think even last episode you said something about um, you know to the, our, our listeners and viewers. Hey, any any subjects that you have, any questions that you have, things that you'd like to see us or, or hear us dis discuss, you know, throw them out there. Um, and then I put the caveat in there that you know just because you suggest it doesn't mean we're going to talk about it because it might not be a good idea. Um, this this one happened to be a good idea, and this this came from a uh, a longtime uh, Marine Corps brother of mine and uh, okay. someone who listens uh, regularly. And uh, John Sandzone suggested this, and uh, so we're going to talk about it. So thanks, uh, thanks Sandy for the uh, for the idea here. Okay. Well, very good. And and did he give you some indication of what direction he wanted it to go in? Yeah, kind of the same thing of uh, of where we're going to go with it. Um, just the uh, the fact that it's uh, it's somewhat uh, lacking in our society in, in a lot of areas, and I okay. think it uh, it causes some people difficulty that they're unaware that they're they're actually creating for themselves by not utilizing this particular skill set. I would agree with that. 
actually. Yeah. That seems very prevalent right now. And, yeah. and I, I would say the more tuned in you are to current events and everyday news, the more aware of it you are. Yeah, or the and, lack you know, thereof. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah you, you just see, you see things on the TV every day and people say, wow, if they thought about that for more than a nanosecond, they probably wouldn't have done that. <laughs> right, true that. So we're yeah. talking all around this subject. I don't know if we've and, actually called it out yet, have we? No, we haven't. Should we? Yeah, do it. All right. So the subject for today, and uh, the title is still a, a little bit of a work in progress, but the subject is critical thinking and the importance of utilizing critical thinking in your life and your you know everyday activities so that you don't... Um, you know, find yourself in situations you shouldn't be in or holding positions that have no uh, grounding in fact or, um, you know, just being a, I, I think a good way to describe it is being a sheep um, and, and not, uh, you know, not thinking for yourself, just kind of going along, being, being a part of that herd of sheep out there in society that, you know, take everybody's word for everything. And, you know, I saw it on the internet. You know, it's true. Bonjour. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a whole bigger world out there when, when you start utilizing the skills of critical thinking. And that's just one of the things that we wanted to discuss today. And uh, again, it was a great, uh, great topic idea and uh, something worth talking about. I, I agree. And, you know, as you were just saying that, the thing that it reminded me of was um, on, on YouTube, it's actually a, a video when uh, Ben Shapiro and Piers Piers uh, Morgan, Morgan, Piers Morgan were debating um, the gun control. Yeah, uh, years Fox, ago. You see, Fox News brought that knucklehead back on the air. Uh, I I did notice that he's back on to something. Yes, yes, I haven't. I don't, haven't I don't know. It. I mean, I, I like for the most part what Fox News does. I, I'm not sure what they're what they're doing here. Yeah, um, and I'm open to to you know let it play out and see. He just uh, he, he hasn't got all that good of a reputation in my mind. Yeah, but just the quick, the, you know, the, the quick summary of that was, um, I remember the critical exchange was, uh, Piers asked him, why, why do you, uh, and he was really focused on the assault rifles, but, uh, you know, basically the question is, why do you need all these guns and why do you need these high powered guns? And the answer was, uh, because government can go tyrannical. And, uh, and Piers just could not you, when you watch that exchange, couldn't accept that as an answer. He's like, he, he thought that that was maddening. No way. No way is the government going to go tyrannical and turn on its people and impose its will on its people. Right. And, and, um, he doesn't remember know, why America was founded, right? Right. Right. Uh, you know, yeah. and it's, and, and Shapiro was like, if you don't believe that can happen, Yep. then you don't know history. Remember that? And anyway, so oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was lack of critical thinking. There we go. Lack of critical thinking, second, third, fourth order thinking on the part of Piers Morgan to, to take that on. Now, I'm sure he would argue that. But anyway, that to me was, if you don't take the time to critically think and the steps associated with it, right, right. then you end up in a place where it doesn't make a lot of sense yeah. in a historical context. So what did you come up with uh, as far as a, a formal definition of critical thinking? Because what, what I found is there are as many definitions out there as you do searches for. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and there, I, I found one I, I like and, and really kind of uh, align and agree with. But um, there's there's a bunch of them and all of them ultimately say the same thing. Uh, some just, you know, take a more direct route of getting there than others. Since it's your topic, why don't you go first? Because I want you to get the, and then I'll tell you what mine is. I do have one and I'll read it. It's right over here. Yeah. So I'm going to grab my notes here so I get this exactly right. But ultimately, this is the one that, uh, that I landed on that I like the description the best. So this is a formal definition of critical thinking. Disciplined thinking that is clear, rational, open-minded, and informed by evidence. Okay. Yep. I, I love that, actually. Um, it's... Uh, probably simpler than, than mine, although mine's pretty short, it's not necessarily simple. Uh, but it's the same elements, the objective analysis and evaluation of an issue in order to form a judgment. Right. Um, and I, to me, that's a lot of, you know, concepts 
that could be boiled down to something very simple. And uh, I, I ultimately came up with why it's important, why I do it, um, how do you do it? And there are five easy steps to do it when we get there, but yeah. Gotcha. Did you just move closer to your microphone or something? Cause your voice, your, your volume just kind of shot up on me. No, not at all. It's just me sitting here. All right. Chatting away. All right. I'll keep an eye on that. Might have to turn you down a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I can stop, start speaking softer and gentler. No, no, you're good. Okay. Talk softly and carry a big stick. Is that what you're going to do? <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's interesting because there were several different examples out there about um, critical thinking. And here's, you know, here's an example of how it works and how people just automatically sign on to stuff, right? So this is one that popped into my head. I didn't actually read this example, but I, I've, I've heard this many times and you, I'm sure you've heard it too, right? So the whole idea of um, you better put a jacket on before you go outside or you'll catch cold. Um, you know, that, think about that. Um, the, you know, you, you might get cold because the temperature is, is low, you are not going to catch a cold because you go outside without a jacket because temperature doesn't doesn't create colds you know viruses do germs do right. um and you know that's one of those things that you know it's just a kind of a commonplace statement that that we hear people say and there's i'm sure there's tons of other examples that you can think think of um it's just that that mindset of of taking that oh well, I, for its face value and going back in the house oh i better get a jacket i don't want to get sick yeah, that temperature is not going to cause you to get sick. Well, me the temperature, right, right. Um, as I understand it, I think some people will tell you that the reason they say that is because when you go outside and you get cold, you your body uh, defense systems spend all this energy trying to keep you warm. Right. That it, it actually weakens overall, it weakens your immune system. And with a weaker immune system, then you run the risk of getting cold. To me, that's what I understand the connection. But yes, it's not from the cold itself. Right. It's from what it does to your body that weakens you, that enables you to catch the cold. I think that's a that's a better understanding of it, right? So that's a right. conclusion that you came to because of thinking more critically about that particular statement. Because on go. its face, it's just uh, you know you go outside, you get cold, you're going to get sick. Nah, it's not temperature. Right. It's not the cold temperature that causes you to get sick. It could That's be the exactly weakened right. immune system because it's busy trying to keep your ass warm. Right. Yeah. And yeah. and you know it's all about asking questions for understanding instead of being the the smile and nod crowd um, in every scenario that you're engaged in. You know. Now I'm I'm also not one that believes you should always be the questioning one. You know, look, you know sometimes there's um, this, the situation calls for, you know, agreement and compliance, uh, unless it's something that's completely, you know, nonsense and, and you don't want to, uh, it makes good sense not to agree with it. Um, and at the same time, it's one of those, uh, you know, that you got to evaluate each situation and, and decide how you're going to conduct yourself. But, you know, I, I certainly encourage people not to be the, the smiling and nodding crowd to everything, you know, think about stuff. And, uh, you know, all of these, um, Political candidates is a, is, a, is another good example. Um, you know, I I know that there are um, a ton of people that in this last election voted for one particular candidate because of their dislike for the other one. Um, it had nothing to do with the qualifications of the candidate that they voted for and 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 that person's capabilities. It was all about their disdain for the other one. And, yeah. You know, we, we see where that's gotten us, right? Um, how many how many other scenarios in in your life have you acted because of that mindset and that mentality and didn't evaluate the actual evidence and make a, an informed decision? You know, that's a good. Yeah, point. it's you know the thing about humans is you're right, you're absolutely right, and humans can be very illogical um, and unpredictable, and that very often doesn't end up well. Every once in a while it does, you know, the old saying, poor planning carried out violently sometimes yields good results. Um, key word, sometimes, uh, right. and probably better word is like, every once in a while might turn out to have some good results. Right. But, um, you know, critically thinking through every issue that you're talking about, I mean, it's important for life, it's important for your career, it's important for your health, uh, I mean, just 
again, um, w w without thinking beyond the immediate issue that's in front of you right now uh, and your reaction to it, which might be an emotional immediate reaction, if you don't take that second order and third order thinking, those extra steps to ask a right. few additional questions, you're right. You can make decisions for the wrong reasons. I've done it many times in my life. <laughs> oh, we're all guilty of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, just, uh, yeah. I, and that's the, that's the beauty of it, right? When you start paying attention to those things and you realize that, uh, that you weren't implementing critical thinking and, and really evaluating what it was you were about to decide on or, or you know, how to, what your stance was or what action or inaction you were going to take. Um, yeah, it, uh, it, 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 you can no doubt cite many examples in your life where you, you didn't utilize that critical thinking element. But, but I would like to pull the thread on your example a little bit. So, you know, right. there, it, it's, a, it's an election of a, an important, um, you know, person in your life in terms of the jurisdiction and all that. Maybe it's president, maybe it's your local politician or whatever. And I'm, I'm looking at this list that I have over here. You know, you might like them, you might like their personality, you might not, you might not like their personality, whatever it is. But if you ask just a few questions, first of all, it makes you more informed. Okay, what what where do they stand on the issues? Go to go to their website and read about all of the big issues and what their stance is on it, so that you know instead of this person's a Democrat, this person's a Republican, or this person's an independent. Well, okay, but what does that mean? There are there are conservative Democrats, there are liberal cons um, Republicans. I mean, you need to know more than just what their label is, right? Right. Politically, if that's the issue that you're dealing with and multiply that times anything that you're dealing with. Uh, it makes you a better citizen. Uh, you'll, you'll be happier with yourself because you understand what you're dealing with now instead of just, you know, taking things at face value. You're now understanding what the issues are, strengthens your problem solving skills, strengthens your brain as you go into and do this. Okay, now I know this information. What do I think about it? How do I, you know, and as you go through that whole process of analysis, it's strengthening your reasoning processes. Yeah. Agreed. So here's something that I, I, I'm going to throw out there it might be a little controversial in nature. Uh, folks might uh, push back on this a little bit. But here's what I think about our, our current political system, and folks that align with one party, that party only and always vote the party ticket um you know no no matter what they're going to vote the party ticket um i think in those scenarios when you're acting like that what you're doing is taking your ability to critically think and evaluate this set, this this set of circumstances and just putting it on the shelf boom yeah. yeah um and and you know allowing somebody else because of whatever you know popular decision or um you know, you're allowing them to make that decision for you because you're just following that party line. Um, yeah. And I think in some ways that, that might contribute to the problems that we have in, in, in society today and some of the disagreement that we have. Uh, folks need to be evaluating information on, on their own and making informed, rational decisions about how they're going to proceed. Yeah, yeah. Well, how do you do it? I mean, now that you now that you've uh, sort of focused on this issue, um, what's what's the wisdom of the ages? How how do you go about? In very simple terms, one of the tasks of leadership is to simplify the complicated, critical thinking. I mean, people teach courses on this. That's that's probably why I thought this yeah. was so big because yeah. I literally took like a three day seminar twenty five years ago on critical thinking. I don't remember a damn thing about the course other than it was like three days long and it was on critical thinking. So right. I thought, wow, this is big. But um, how do you take all that and boil it down into how do you do it or how do you recommend well, others do it? So I, I think, um, you know, there's there's a few different elements to it. I think one of the um, one of the, the biggest things is to be curious about stuff. Um, oh, don't word. don't make you know, don't make the mistake of taking somebody else's word for for everything or taking the public opinion or what you believe is public fact uh, about a subject. You know, be curious and, and do your own research and, and find out, you know, hey, why, why is this the way it is? Why, why do people feel this way about this particular subject? Because you may find out it's not, you know, it's not evidence-based. 
um, and, you know, question everything, which I think in, in some ways is kind of aligned with the curiosity. But, you know, it's, it's, it's important to be, I don't, you know, one of the things I, I would encourage people to be careful of is don't, you know, the word critical in and of itself has a negative connotation to it. Um, in this particular circumstance, it's not negative at all. You know, behaving in a critical thinking way it has, is not associated with negativity um, at, a, at a high level, right? So there is some negativity when you're talking about being skeptical um, and questioning everything. That can be perceived a little bit negative, but it's important, right? Because, you know, there's a lot of people in the world that will, you know, bullshit their way through it. Um, and, uh, and, and tell you stuff that they believe is absolutely true to their core that has no basis in fact. Um, so, you know, question that stuff. I don't yeah. think they're, I don't think those, those people that, you know, operate like that are intentionally trying to mislead people. They might be some of them. Um, I, I just think that, you know, they haven't taken the time to, to really think about it themselves, you know, be a, be a free thinker, be your own person. You know, we've heard these things, um, you know, put out there as ways to, you know, conduct yourself. And, and, and then, you know, folks are putting that critical thinking thing on the shelf. So I think those are, are two big things to be curious and be skeptical. You know, don't uh, don't be taken to the bank. You know, you see it happen, happen all the time with, um, you know, fraud on uh, on the Internet. Um, yeah. Folks, folks will fall for some silly shit. Um, yeah. And. Uh, you know, it's just a head shaker sometimes. It's like, seriously, did you really think that that was, you know? Um, so yeah, think it, think it through and be, um, you know, be a little bit, uh, be a little bit humble about how you, you know, conduct yourself too, right? So make sure that you're, you know, if you're making these, these hard stands on things, you know, this, this is so, uh, make sure those things that you're putting out there are backed up in, in fact as well, and that you're not, you know, one of these folks that are running around and, and not having fully processed something. Um, and, you know, like I said, do your homework. I, I think those are probably the, the biggest things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all the stuff um, that you said fits into this, you know, five easy steps that I, um, which I'll walk through real quick that I came up with. So it starts at the same place you did. Uh, just observe what's going on around you observe and maybe do some research so you're just kind of watching whatever the issue is and let's let's stick with the political realm because everybody can relate to that do i like this candidate well let me observe them let me let me watch let me listen let me ask some questions let me ask a lot of questions about them that, that are curious to me based on my observations so that's you're just kind of in this data collection mode um, then you begin to, now that you know this, you begin to analyze them. Well, okay, they've said this, but why did they say that? And what do I think about that? And how does that compare to my values and my objectives? You know, so you're going through this whole analysis process. And at some point, you're going to draw a conclusion, right? You're going to say, this is where I stand on this issue because of A, B, and C. I think at that point, this finalizes the critical thinking sort of five steps. So the, the, those are the three. Step one, observe it, observe and ask questions, uh, analyze, draw conclusions. The third one then, talk about it with folks, communicate it, you know, test your ideas. Here's here's the this sort of the, the way I'm, I'm headed. I think I'm headed in this direction. What do you think about it? Let it see the light of day. That's a great antiseptic because a lot of times you, you think you hold or you're going to hold a position on something, then you start to talk about it and you start to hear what others are thinking. And you go, huh, maybe I better rethink that. Maybe I, maybe I don't understand that person as well as I thought I did. And then the last one is choose a solution uh, that you think is right for you. And then you go back to the beginning and you go back to observe again. Well, now that you've chosen a solution and it's just a repeatable cycle that goes round and round again. Um, I think that's a great way to, to do it. Yeah, agreed. And the the one thing that's coming to mind while you're talking about that, and and uh, yeah. what, that I I forgot to mention as well, is um, throughout all of this, it's important to maintain a position of open mindedness, because gotcha. you uh, you know you may go into it with uh, some entering assumptions that you ultimately find out based on the evidence that you uh, discover was wrong, you know, and, and uh, you have to be open minded enough to, to receive that information or, or look for it and then receive it when it's presented to you and, uh, you know, change your mind and be open to own that. You know what? I, I thought about this in a certain way and um, I, I was off track. Uh, yeah. I, I've, I've found some additional information that uh, 
made me think about it differently and and now i you know i'm, I'm more in this camp yeah. um, and you got to be open-minded enough to do that you really do that's a good way to say it um for me personally here's another example uh you know uh ron paul and Rand paul to national level ron is gone right he's the father the right. son is Rand, and i know that they're out there i know that they're libertarians i never really paid a lot of attention to them over the years and then Rand paul started making lots of headlines because of his very aggressive stance against many of the things that uh, dr fauci was saying about masks and this and that and all this kind of stuff right and uh and so i started paying closer attention to him and uh it was just interesting to follow how my own thinking changed because of open-mindedness he was not a guy that i was typically paying attention to i said no i'm gonna i'm gonna see what he has to say and then you go back and watch several of the videos and several of the analysis that he did and it makes you better informed and then you can update your your thought and your opinion based on what he said instead of just sort of being in this lane with your blinders on um which a lot of people do oh yeah yeah, yeah. just a part of the herd yeah was that you that said something to me about that um something about herd and ah, i can't remember recently i heard something from somebody i don't know uh, it's escaping me yeah i don't think it was me i mean i talk about you know i mean humans we we're herd animals um yeah. and you know we have to fight that you know that notion to follow everything that the herd does um because sometimes the herd will run your ass right off a cliff um and you, you got to be paying attention enough to realize when things are about to go bad you know it's really really true that that will happen and especially in mobs you know there's the whole mob mentality uh right. so the mob effect that people people just sort of lose their minds uh and go the direction that the mob is going even though it makes zero sense and at the end if you would thought about it for a second you would have realized wow no that's that's not good it's not going to end well i don't need to follow the mob on this one and, right uh, but it's hard to do it's hard to <laughs> yeah i'm just thinking right now this just flashed into my head you know i i, I don't know if you, your parents ever said this to you but i remember my my mother saying this to me so if all your friends jumped off a bridge you're going to jump off a bridge too right you know, I, I think she was whether she knew it or not she was creating the foundation for critical thinking you know right. think about this all your friends are jumping off the damn bridge is it a good idea right Maybe, you know look look into this a little bit more before you uh follow that lead right uh, yeah, I don't know. That just flashed into my mind. Yeah, and and then maybe the, you know, as you analyze that situation, you may say, "Huh, well, maybe I need some different friends, or maybe I need some friends that, that think differently than this." Or if all your friends are, you know, smoking dope or doing drugs or stealing or you know, fighting or whatever, whatever it is, you know, and you kind of go, "Huh, yeah, what what is it about? What is it saying about me that all my friends do this?" <laughs> right. <laughs> Hey, here's a question for you. Um, what is your interpretation of the difference between stupid and ignorant? Um, okay, uh, right off the top of my head, stupid is, uh, you know the right thing to do and you just don't do it, I guess. Um, ignorant is you just don't know, right. uh, you know, to be ignorant of, I'm driving down a street and I get a ticket for speeding and I was ignorant of the fact that I was in a 25 mile zone. I thought I was in a 35 mile zone. That's to me, that's ignorant. You just didn't know. Um, and sometimes ignorance, ignorance is bliss, but ignorance is not right or right. good. Um, stupid is, you know what the right thing to do is and you don't do it. It's very simply. I don't know. What do you think? I, I, are you playing gotcha so with me? No, no, not at all. I, I somewhat similar to that, right? So I think the you know the stupid thing, yeah. Sometimes it is knowing knowing what needs to be done and, and just not doing it. Um, I think you know it, it also has some uh, some roots and capabilities too, right? So there's sometimes there's there's okay. there might be a situation where you know a person just doesn't have the capacity to understand that. Uh, okay. Where you know ignorance in in my mind is. Uh, is only i mean it can be a bad thing right um there's so much available to us in the world and, and we can go out and learn new things 
Um, and, you know, I think ignorance shows up when, when people have a need to learn new things and choose not to. Um, okay. That's that's willful ignorance, in my in my opinion. Um, and that's a that's a dangerous you know, path to walk. So um, I, I, I think that's the, the difference for me. Ignorance is ignorance is just not knowing. Um, and uh, it's just bad when you, you know, when the opportunity to know is there and you choose not to. Yeah, I okay. Yeah, that to me, that's a and, and you know, every one of these things you could place in a context and slightly change the meaning of the definition. Right. Um, uh, but there was something that you said about stupid that I was going to react to, but I can't remember what it was at the very beginning um, of that explanation. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, there's something about I was saying that, you know, stupid is like some people just don't have the capacity um, for certain subject matter. They, they, um, um, because of, you know, it could be they choose not to have the capacity. Um, and, you know, I, I just I think in some circumstances, though, there is that where, where folks just don't have the capacity to comprehend what whatever this particular subject matter is. OK. Um, I don't know if I'd call that stupid. Maybe they're just not able. I don't know. Maybe I, I get your point, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to try to pare down the difference between the two. And what I really wanted to get to is the fact that the ignorance is dangerous, especially when it's that willful ignorance. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would agree with that. Ignorance is, well, and that's what, what they always say in court of law is if you're ignorant of the law, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Excuse. That, that's your fault. The, the fact that I didn't know I was in a 25 mile an hour zone when I drove past the sign, probably two or three of them saying right. that the speed limit of 25 doesn't excuse me for violating that. Uh, that that just tends to be my lack of awareness or ignorance or, or choice to not pay attention to the signage to know have no situational awareness. Yeah, um, the law doesn't care that you're ignorant. It's still the law. There you go. Amen yeah. to that. Yeah. No. Yeah. The other thing that I think that's worth mentioning here, though, this is kind of the extreme of critical thinking. A lot of times people can become paralyzed by the analysis that they're doing, analysis um, paralysis, as right. some people call it. Uh, you don't want to get stuck in that either. You know, you don't want to spend so much time analyzing it that you can't make a decision yeah. and uh, or, or form a conclusion or come to a solution because that's a, you know, that, that's equally as bad as, well, being ignorant, honestly, in my view. Yeah. Yeah, because depending upon the circumstances, uh, the paralysis of analysis thing can be dangerous. Yes, it can. You definitely got to be careful of that. And and waste time tremendously. So, yeah. I hope we've hit on it. I think so. Uh, I, I think we gave some good pointers on how to uh, engage in critical thinking, what, what some of the mindset associated with that is, curiosity, skepticism, open-mindedness. Um, you know, investigate the facts. You know, want to – have that desire to understand, have a greater understanding of why things are so. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I'm glad you brought it up. I've, I've dusted off the issue and started thinking about things in my life. Actually, this very day that I wanted to apply some additional critical thinking toward to improve my life. So that's what I mean. I love this. I love doing this podcast. <laughs> Good. Good. I do too. We, uh, it's important for us to love doing it. So we yeah. keep coming back and doing it every week, right? Yeah. And I, and I think our, our audience, you know, can get a lot out of it too. I do. Um, I love the people that listen. Absolutely. Yeah. We certainly appreciate those that, that listen and watch. And uh, thank you again, uh, Sandy, for, uh, for the recommendation on this topic. And uh, hopefully we, uh, we check those boxes that you were, were interested in hearing more about. Yeah. If not... Yeah. Let me know. <laughs> and keep keep passing on the suggestions. That's right. We appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think we've covered it. I do too. All right. Well, you know what that means. I'm going to reach over here. I was going to say, were you saluting me? Um, but no, I was kind of, it's kind of fake. No, out. if I was saluting you like that, I'd have to kick my own ass because that would have, that was just sloppy as shit. And I'm sitting down. Uh, no matter who you are, where you are, or what you're doing, make sure between this podcast and then the next, you take time to enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Great Beer Podcast. 
Please subscribe so you'll receive notifications when new episodes are available. To learn more about the Greybeards, visit their website, graybeardchronicles.com. That's right. Sitting down, no cover, and that was a sloppy salute. No, that was definitely not a salute. I would expect nothing less from a Marine. <laughs>